we're going to get started. Um, there are three of us here. Uh, Zeke, hopefully his webcam will pop up shortly, but if not, we'll just get started anyway. Um, so thank you everybody again for joining uh, today's webinar, How Retailers Are Adapting in Difficult Times. So first and most importantly, we hope that everybody is healthy and staying safe and doing as best they can through this really difficult time. Um, you know, these last couple of weeks have been really difficult and there's Zeke. <laughs> so these last couple of weeks have been really difficult um, and there will still be quite a few weeks uh, or some time in the future. Uh, you know, we're not exactly sure how this, how long this all will last. Um, everybody on this call, I'm sure, is affected in a different way, slightly different, um, depending on where you're located. Um, a lot of our retail clients, some of them are either closed completely or partially closed. Some still have their brick and mortar business open um, and that, or they're pushing all their focus to online sales. No matter what your scenario is or how it is, uh, you know, for your business, we're really hoping that this webinar will help to bring ideas motivate everybody. Um, hopefully some of you are already doing some of the things that we're going to go through. And if you're not, then, or even if you are doing some, uh, hopefully you'll get a lot of takeaways and you'll walk away from this webinar motivated uh, with some good to-dos to get started on for your company. Okay, so first some quick introdu introductions. Uh, we are with Celerant Technology. We are a uh, complete retail software provider, providing omni-channel solutions for both in-store and online. Uh, myself, uh, uh, this is Michelle Salerno. I'm the director of marketing here, and I, I work out of our New York office, although today I'm here in my home office uh, in New Jersey. Zeke? Yeah, I'm Zeke Hamdani. I'm the director of e-commerce, and I work out of our Atlanta, Georgia office. And I'm Ray Wiener. I'm a senior sales executive with the company, and I work out of a home office in Denver, Colorado. So we have a lot to cover today, um, a lot of different ideas. We're going to jump right in. Um, the main focus right now, of course, as everybody knows, is online. As more and more retail stores are forced to close their doors, more and more retail retailers are focusing to online sales. So we're going to talk a lot today about uh, e-commerce. We're going to talk about virtual classes and consultations, uh, SEO efforts. You know, some retailers might be thinking, let me tighten the belt. Let me stop my spending and stop working on SEO. I'll resume it after this is all over. We strongly recommend you don't do that. Now more than ever is showing us why it's so important to be online and be ranking on page one on Google. Um, and those efforts are super important and it's important to continue those efforts. Um, a big focus for today is going to be on communication. Right now, more than ever, communication is key. You want to stay talking to your customers, be top of mind, and really get your products and your brand in front of them. We're going to talk about thinking outside the box, uh, coming up with new ways to deliver your product, um, whether it be curbside or, or quite a few different methods we're going to discuss. And right now is the time where retailers actually have some time, and how often is that? Typically, when we're working with our clients, the one thing that's a common theme is they never have time. They wear so many hats. So now, using this downtime wisely, um, and we have a ton of tips and different things that you should be doing now to better prepare your business for when this is all over. So first, we'll talk about online sales and virtual classes. So it's no secret that right now the big push is e-commerce. Uh, E-commerce is actually replacing in-store purchases as billions are, are home uh, at stay-at-home directives. Consumers are changing the way they're buying. So some people who haven't purchased online in the past are now purchasing online. And others who have always been buying online are now buying products online that maybe they never used to buy. Um, for example, myself, I've always purchased my cat food at ShopRite. Um, but now I'm ordering it online. And I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm getting comfortable with the fact that it's being delivered to my front door and I no longer have to walk around the store with a 30 pound bag of cat food. So moving forward, I'm probably going to continue purchasing that product online. Um, and so that's just one example of many that are out there of how uh, online purchasing is changing right now because of the situation. But it's also going to change once we get through the situation and move forward as well. Um, 
Across our client base, we have a lot of different vertical markets, and I'm sure those of you on this call, you're, you're serving a lot of different industries, whether it be, um, you know, whether you're considered essential or maybe it's school supplies. You know, there's big increases right now in homeschooling, educational toys, um, building supplies uh, for, for home projects or home decor. So depending on your vertical, uh, your perception and, and your experience through this will be very different. But the one thing that is the same across all verticals is if you're not online, you need to be online. And if you are online, you need to make some quick changes to your website. So some of the topics we're gonna really dig deep into today, uh, email marketing, communication across the board, whether you're communicating to your customers through emails or social media, um, the point is you have to get in front of them, you have to continue to build your community engage with your customers and get your company in front of them. Um, they may purchase now, they may not, but even if they don't purchase, the impression that you leave on them now will, will last for your company for the long haul. Uh, we'll talk about online marketplaces. So whether you have your own e-commerce site or not, you can still push products out to different marketplaces like Amazon or Walmart, um, or maybe you want to use auction sites like eBay. Um, We'll talk about classes uh, and online classes. The goal really is you wanna mimic your store experience to your online experience. So if you're a retailer who offers courses and classes in your store, you wanna offer that online and flip to virtual. Um, I can speak for our company. We have our client conference once a year. We invite all our retailers to come, have two days of training, um, you know, learn new features, meet with our partners, integrations and all that. It was supposed to be the end of this month in Texas. Uh, we did not want to cancel it. Of course, we're not hosting it in Texas, but we are still having the conference. We moved really quickly and now we're pivoting it and we're offering it virtually. So we're gonna have a two day virtual event and we're really trying to give our retail clients the same experience or as close to that experience as possible online as they would have in, uh, in Texas. And we encourage all of you to do the same. Uh, we have quite a few client spotlights today that we're going to go through, and these really are my favorite. Um, these are different examples that we've seen our clients do um, and do really well. Um, so in terms of, you know, offering virtual classes, we have a retail client here in New York. Uh, they're a toy retailer, a toy shop, and all of New York City, uh, unless you're essential, your doors are closed. And of course, New York City public schools are all closed as well. So you have a lot of students, a lot of children at home, a lot of parents at home doing their best to homeschool. Um, and so what this retailer is doing is they are offering at home classes. Um, they're doing things like arts and crafts. They're doing mommy and me cooking class, uh, music and dance class. And they're bringing on a different host every day, uh, depending on the topic. And they're inviting parents and children to partake. The first week they're offering all these classes at no charge. And so, of course, they're sharing this on social media. And then what's happening? Their customers are seeing this on social. They're getting really excited and they wanna share it with their mom and dad friends. So they're then sharing it on social media. And when they're sharing it, they're sharing it to their entire network. So now our client is not only marketing to their existing customers, but they're getting so much more longevity out of social media because all of their friends are now, all of their customers' friends, I should say, are now seeing the post um, visiting their website, signing up for classes. Um, and again, you know, they'll, they'll work with them now, but they'll also maybe purchase from them in the future uh, and do classes in their store when they reopen in the coming weeks or months. So next we'll talk about launching uh, an e-commerce site. If you don't already have e-commerce, there are certain ways that you can launch one now pretty quickly. Um, or if you do have an existing e-commerce site, You'll want to make some quick changes uh, to really improve on your site and change your messaging and get in front of your customers. So Zeke, I'll let you take this away. Uh, sure. Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> so let's start with uh, launching a site. So uh, as Michelle said earlier, you know, retailers have never had time. I've been in this industry for almost 18 years now. And retailers are always busy. They're always spread too thin, wearing multiple hats. So, you know, the silver lining is now there is uh, there is time to allocate to projects that were, you know, previously ignored. So launching a website right now, 
uh, you want to invest time into it. And also, if you uh, are in one of those industries where Celeron has relationship with distributors or vendors, we can expedite the process because the biggest roadblock or biggest hurdle in launching a new site is uh, gathering all the data. So, you know, if you have 10,000 products in your store, it's, it's not an easy job to gather 10,000 images for each product. Then within product, you could have different colors and different angles and all that's a lot of work. And that's been the roadblock or the hurdle for most of the clients, most of the you know, retailers I speak to. So what we have done, you know, we have uh, partnered up with in the outdoor sporting good industry, primarily in fishing industry, archery industry, we have uh, partnered up with distributors that have a very broad data set and they provide us with product images, product descriptions, product specs. So we can uh, leverage that data and get you online very quickly. So, uh, so you can you know, be online while stores are closed and get your feet wet. But uh, if you are in an industry where we do not have such relationship, where you have to procure this data yourself, then what I say is start small. And uh, you will, let's say, even if you launch site with 1,000 products, that's a thousand that you didn't have before online. So you have you will at least get some exposure right away. And uh, if if you uh, you know if you're able to get online quickly, that is not just an effort for this time frame for this situation that we're in. That is something for the long run, because as Michelle was saying, people are getting used to this new normal that we have, and uh, you know retailers were hit pretty hard few years ago with Amazon, where the shift uh, was going into e-commerce world. And now with this COVID-19 uh, situation, we are forced to shop online even more. But I think this is going to linger and this is going to become a trend. So this is the time, if you are not on e-commerce right now, this is the time to really put effort into that. So that's for launching. And a big thing, if I could just jump in, a big thing uh, to take away here is, you know, whether you work with us, whether you're our client or not, um, you know, now at the time you really have to lean on your technology partner, uh, lean on them to help you do the heavy lifting. Um, you know, I can speak for us at Celerant. We've shifted uh, internal resources currently because of the need um, so that we can launch e-commerce sites faster. We can get clients going on digital marketing faster. So we're doing everything we can to help our clients. Um, and your vendors hopefully are doing the same. Um, so really reach out to your to your vendors uh, for the product data that Zeke said and, le and lean on your technology partner to help you do some of this heavy lifting for you. Because a lot of retailers just, they want to do it, but they don't know how. Right, absolutely. So now to adjusting your existing e-commerce. So a few obvious things, you know, uh, since it's not normal, it's not business as usual, you want to promote uh, first of all, you want to be very careful with how you uh, adjust your website. You want to be very sensitive about the situation. And last thing you want to do is shove pro uh, products into people's faces at this time when they're going through so much difficulty. So you got to be, uh, you know, very careful with that. And uh, you want to make adjustments where uh, you clearly communicate the delivery times. You clearly, clearly uh, speak about contactless pickups, like curbside pickups, and also run promotions while also have some empathy for the situation. Uh, you know, a lot of our clients, uh, what they're doing is they're putting some of the money into charities, part of the revenue, which, you know, just gives a good taste. Uh, you know, it's, it's just very tasteful to do that around this time. So I would make adjustments like that, but certainly, uh, you know, put as many products as you can. The products that you didn't have on your e-commerce before, you want to make sure you take this time to put those up and expand your product set on the website for sure. Absolutely. So uh, we have a quick client spotlight here that I brought up on the screen. Hopefully you all can see it. Um, so this is one of our clients in Alberta, Canada, um, and they didn't have an e-commerce site and they wanted to launch one really quickly. So uh, our e-commerce team helps them here. And this site that you see, and you can check out the link uh, it's shop.bellissimafashions.com. If you look in the, in the small URL there, you can see it. Um, it's a beautiful site. Uh, and they launched this site in two weeks. Um, you know, 
a lot of te teamwork on their side and also on our side. Um, so it is possible to launch a really beautiful site. This particular site has 500 styles, which again is a lot, a lot of styles because they, they, they did some work on their end as well. Um, one thing that they did on this homepage that I really like, I want to point out is you see where it says gift cards available. That's front and center on their homepage. And that's one thing that you should absolutely be doing right now because People are still celebrating birthdays. They're still celebrating anniversaries and they still need to give gifts. And if you can promote your gift cards, um, you know, we've seen some clients do it where spend, uh, buy a hundred dollar gift card, 10% back goes to a fundraiser, or maybe, you know, spend a hundred dollars on a gift card and get a $20 gift card for yourself or just market your gift cards, period. Um, but the, the thought is, you know, people are going to purchase gift cards and gifts and get that sale now for some future purchases. So this is more about um, adjusting your e-commerce. So Zeke did go through some of these already. Um, some other things we've seen is this client here, Dance Foot Life. So they sell dance wear, um, but now quickly they're pivoting and they're, they're also offering face masks. And so they put that right on their homepage as well. Um, we do recommend that your website has some mention of COVID-19, uh, something, a, in, uh, informing your customers that you are open, if you are open, or maybe your store is closed, but your e-commerce is, is open. Maybe you're offering curbside pickup. Whatever you're doing, you need to make it noticeable front and center on your homepage, um, whether that be with a pop-up message or, or some kind of message box, um, or just keep it simple and have something in the header. But something should be there referencing COVID-19 and how your business is responding. Um, delivery options should be front and center, whether that's uh, you know, order online, pick up in store or curbside pickup or however you're getting your products to your customers. Um, consider offering free shipping or extending your return policies. So you might, you might want to widen that return policy window um, to encourage more people to buy online from you right now. Of course, any essential items, promotions, all of that you want to put front and center on your website as well. So next we're going to talk about search engine optimization. SEO services um, and why it's important to not only continue those efforts right now, but also expand. So Zeke, you want to take us through this? Yeah, I mean, this, uh, first of all, uh, you know, search engine optimization, that's the foundation of any website. That's how, that's the, you know, cheapest way to get people to your website. So, you know, just wanted to make that point. Now, you know, I've heard some people saying, hey, now the money is tight these days. I want to suspend my SEO because uh, you know I want to save money wherever I can. So our opinion is and our suggestion is that that's not where you want to cut. And the reason for that is uh, basically what we were saying earlier. Like this is not something that's temporary as in you know increase in online shopping. This is a trend that's going to continue for a while. So you want to plant some seeds right now so that could bear some fruit, you know, down the road. And, you know, with the, you know, the interesting part about search engine optimization is that it doesn't give you instant gratification. It, you don't see the results right away, but it is a slow progression. But when, once it builds up, then there's a lot of bang for your buck. So we highly uh, recommend staying on top of it and continue to basically double down on it. Right. Um, communication, as I said earlier, is is this is probably the biggest part of our of our message today. Um, it's so important to continue to communicate. Uh, there's a lot of retailers or just people in general right now who are kind of stuck and frozen and in panic mode uh, and watching the news and getting consumed. And and we just strongly recommend that you do not be one of those uh, people or or businesses. Um, you need to move fast and pivot and continue to speak to your customers. Um, and so we're going to talk through some of that. Um, the top three reasons to, to continue to keep communication flowing, you want to ensure your customers feel cared for. You want to be really empathetic to them. Um, definitely, I would recommend changing your messaging. You know, don't just be hitting them with your standard marketing. I also recommend pausing any automated workflows or, or email campaigns, drip campaigns that you may have typically running. I would pause those. Um, and continue hitting them with other campaigns and messages, but have them be more timely. Um, you want to stay top of mind. Again, whether they're buying from you now or not, uh, the impression that you leave on them now will definitely last long term. 
and use this time to expand your reach, build your community, um, and social media is a great way to do that. Communicating with your customers through local outreach. Um, I'm sure you've seen so many different businesses doing that right now, and we and we really do recommend that you as well do it. Um, chipping in, you know, showing your local community, focusing on that local community. What we've seen a few clients uh, do uh, is one is a sportsman's training facility, and so they have really large facilities with really large parking lots. And so one of our clients is allowing local restaurants to use his parking lot um, to do food to go and food pickup orders um, to, to expand beyond just their own small area, but to expand throughout the community. Um, we have a sewing retailer who sells you know, yarn and sewing materials, sewing machines and such. And so what they've done is they've quickly pivoted their team and they're creating face masks and the attachable um, band so that it doesn't hurt you know, the ears. And they're offering them to local hospitals um, we have a sports retailer who has not only a store, but also a sports podcast. And so they have a bunch of advertisers that typically advertise on their podcast. These advertisers right now, don't they didn't want to advertise. They wanted to put the brakes on. So he's actually giving them free advertising so that they can continue to do so. Um, however you decide to help your local community, you know, we recommend you do it. And then, of course, talk about it. So uh, get word out on social media. Um, you know, and, and get the get the get the word throughout the community how you're how you're helping. Another client spotlight here. So this is a gift shop in South Carolina called Party Heroes. Um, I do recommend on Facebook that you check them out because they are really doing everything right. Um, they're really using social media in the right way to get word out to their local community. So what they have done is the owner uh, came up with this great idea to create these rainbow of hope balloon arches. Um, so you can see the picture there, it's multicolor, it's, it's bright, uh, cheerful. And so she's creating these balloon arches and she, her team is going around and putting them on all the local businesses, um, Habitat for Humanity and food banks and, and then just regular retail shops as well. Um, well, this is getting a lot of buzz in her community. Um, she's gaining pub publicity through Facebook uh, even a local news channel came and interviewed her and did a whole thing in front of the store. Um, so as a result, you know, she's getting a ton of PR from this. And she's also bringing a lot of smiles to her local community and helping out. Um, and as a result, she has seen a surge in her balloon orders and her gift baskets. Uh, people are, are calling, placing orders and sending them to, you know, to friends, family, hospitals and such. So just a great example um, of how you can use community outreach to, to get your, your brand out there. So email marketing, Zeke, I'm going to let you take this because you can speak to this probably even better than I. I can certainly try. <laughs> so uh, email marketing, as you, you said a lot of this already, Michelle, you know, it's, you know, one of the main ways to communicate to customers. But, uh, you know, we got to go back to where this has to be changed. So you can't continue your uh, existing email marketing campaigns. You got to tweak them, change them, and, uh, you know, put focus on things that matter the most these days. But another thing you can do is you can use email marketing to build your brand. So this is the time to build brand. And as Michelle was saying, you know, you keep them informed of what's going on in your world. So you are a, you know, an online retailer or a brick and mortar, an online combo. You want to make sure they know how you're coping with this and you know keep them updated on what's going on it could be an email that only talks about what you guys what you did in your warehouse because warehouse is still functional what you did in your warehouse to keep your employees safe what are you experiencing what are you implementing uh you know for social distancing think it could be things like that along those lines but the point is to stay on customers mind so when this thing hopefully blows over soon then they will remember that you know I this uh, company was in contact with them. They did all the right thing, and they are responsible company. So you want to have that kind of messaging there. But at the same time, you know I'm not saying that don't sell any products. Obviously, customers still need products. They still want to buy, and you still want to sell. So you got to find a happy medium in there where there are some product offerings, and then also you know things that are relevant to the current news cycle, basically. 
Yeah, and you may want to. You may. Well, that, that's where I was go with that. I was just going to add there. You may want to adjust what you're sending them uh, in terms of the products too, because as people are home now, you know, depending of course on what you sell. But as people are home now, what they're purchasing may be different. Um, you know, they may be purchasing more comfy clothes or pajamas um, or, or things for their home, you know, however that may change. Um, but just take a look at what you're what you're pushing out as far as products, because that may change as well, depend, you know, on the current uh, yeah. situation. Yeah. So we have a client and it's a general store. They sell essentially everything. And when, uh, the, you know, the COVID-19 started and things started to get really bad. What they saw is a, you know, a direct change in what they sell on a daily basis. Their school supply department you know, shot up right away. And more of a luxury type of merchandise, they started to go down. So, and that speaks to exactly what the need is these days. All our kids are home. They're all, you know, it's all homeschooling these days. And we all have become teachers to a certain extent. So we need some supplies. So yes, absolutely, whatever is relevant, in your industry, in your business, that speaks to this. That's what I would, you know, I would double down on that. And then for social media, and and I can't stress this enough. Social media, in my opinion, is right now the most important way to reach your customers, uh, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or you know Twitter or however however you reach them. Um, but social media is in overdrive right now. There's so many people home. They're scrolling their phones. They're scrolling on their computers. Uh, they're really hungry for for engagement and for you know for messaging and they want to communicate with someone other than their spouse and their children <laughs> um and so you know speaking to them through social media is definitely the best approach um so i mean you can see our six best ways here um but what's most important is you're putting on your social media how your company has changed whether your if your doors are still open you want to put your hours on there make it really clear you want you want to let them know what time if you are still open that you're open um, if you're changing the way you're um, delivering your product, maybe you're offering delivery. You know, typically we think delivery is for uh, restaurants and grocery. Well, not anymore. Uh, local businesses are definitely offering delivery and actually delivering their products to their customers. Uh, maybe you're doing curbside pickup. However, you're implementing these practices in your store, do a live stream or make a video because videos and live stream will get you a ton more engagement on social media than just a post or even just a photo. So you can do a quick live stream. You can walk them through your store. If you're open, you can show them, you know, safety precautions you're taking, how you're cleaning your store, things like that. Um, or if your store's closed and you're just doing curbside pickup, take a video, show them exactly what you're doing and how you're doing it um, so that you can really get word out there. Sorry about that. Um, and don't just post, encourage engagement. So, you know, ask your customers questions, start conversations, get everybody talking and engaged on your page. Um, and then of course you can take this even further and um, you can do paid advertising on social media. So whether it's through Facebook and you're just doing something like boosting a post, I mean, it can be as cheap as 10 or $20 a day. Um, so there's a lot of different avenues through social media, both through free posts and also paid um, and, and that's really where you should be focusing and getting word out. Right. So, and, you know, and build your, build your following. That's the best time to do that as well. Because like you said, Michelle, more, more people are on their phones and iPads because they have more time on their hands. So this is the time to increase your following. So then later on, you know, we can capitalize on that. Absolutely. So we have a really great uh, client spotlight on this, right? You're going to take this one because this is a long-term client of yours. Yeah, this is a client who, who really, you know, made some good moves early on, you know, two or three years ago in launching a site. And, you know, the goal was really to combat uh, the tide, if you will, in retail, where there was a decline in brick and mortar and there was, an, you know, a further ascendancy in e-commerce. And that's really, you know, come to fruition in this most challenging time. And as Zeke said, and I've heard from so many clients, everyone is betting that uh, these new habits we're gaining are going to become the new normal. So you might change your messaging as things evolve, you know, but I think there is something to be said for being ready to do commerce wherever the customer, however the customer wants to do commerce. If they want to do it 
at the curbside, if they want delivery, if they want to come to your store, if they want to shop on your website, those are things that you need to be ready, willing, and able to do. And, and that's what this customer did. What they've done most recently in this thing is they paused their regular nurturing email campaign. They've really aggressively shifted to add more social media activity than they did before. You know, this is the retailer who over the course of the holiday season probably sent out 4 million emails. They've kind of put the brakes on that. They've, they've really amplified their social media. And the results are good. You know, I spoke to the owner there. They're seeing increased traffic. It's surprisingly the same assortment that they were selling before and in approximately the same proportion. But people are still reaching out to them. The other things that are relevant, you know, gift card purchases, so your support for your local business is, of course, super important. But this is a good example of even if right now you're not in the position that you want to be, it's time to get there. Yep. And it, for those of you who, who can't see it, it's Omega Sports. And you should definitely check out their Facebook profile as well. Um, they even took down their logo temporarily and have that hashtag, stay strong local. So I love that. All right, so next we're going to talk about implementing new fulfillment and delivery methods. Um, Zeke, let's talk through this a little bit about how retailers really need to think outside the box across the board. All right, so, uh, so regular delivery is as is, so that's not changing. Like I said earlier, you know, you just want to have clear messaging so people have the right expectations of when the packages are going to arrive. But the new, uh, the changes that we are helping our clients make is, uh, basically the contactless pickups. So, you know, before this, the uh, in-store pickup was pretty common and, uh, you know, people like that option if they're local. Now, that is not really uh, an option because stores are either closed or people don't want to go in the store. So we've launched a new app uh, for curbside pickup. Uh, what it does is it just facilitates the process. So uh, whenever uh, an order is placed on the website, website determines which store they're going to go to uh, for curbside pickup. And then the store uh, manager and customer, they stay in, in uh, updated to what's going on with the order. So for example, when the order is ready for pickup, store manager just hits a link and that notifies the customer via text message or email that, hey, your order is ready, come and pick it up. And then when the customer comes to the store, then customer has a link in that text message that says, I'm at curbside. So they click on it, then the manager inside or whoever is the fulfillment person uh, gets notified that, you know, the customer is waiting outside. This is the customer name, order number, blah, blah. And then they take the package outside, serve the customer. And then when they come inside, they can just mark it as customer served. So what it does is it ensures that it's hassle-free and it's contactless. And that's what we're seeing people, you know, really appreciating that because, you know, it, it just uh, adds the extra layer of safety and, you know, cautiousness. Absolutely. Um, and so a quick client spotlight here. So we have a pharmacy uh, retailer out in Wisconsin. Um, and as, since they're a pharmacy, they are fortunate enough to have a drive through window um, which of course not a lot of retailers have if you're not a pharmacy. Um, but what they did was they moved pretty quickly and pivoted that to now offer not just prescriptions uh, for the drive-through, but now over-the-counter OTC um, and also other items. So, you know, the Easter holiday Passover just passed. So they were taking pictures, <clears throat> uh, which you can see here, this is their Facebook page, uh, Tobin's, Tobin's Pharmacy. They were taking pictures of their products, uh, Easter, holiday, you know, holiday things, different gift baskets and candies and such. And you could call the store and you can place an order. You can even just email because they don't have an e-commerce site yet. Um, and so they were taking orders over the phone via email. And then they were allowing their customers to come through the drive through um, and pick up items that way. They were also doing local deliveries. Um, so, again, depending on what you have currently uh, or access, what you have access to with your technology partner, um, you can move pretty quickly and, and, and make a change in how you're delivering your, your products. Another client spotlight here, Tootsie's in Texas. This is a high-end fashion retailer. Ray will speak to this one. 
Yeah, I think this exemplifies a common theme of really agile retailers like uh, Melissa earlier is one of my clients as well. And I think what they're doing is they're all thinking about what's possible, not what they can't do. You know, what can't, you got to set aside. Hopefully we'll get back to that. But what you want to do with this time is think about what you can do. And what we worked out with them, they're a hell retailer in, in fashion. And they've always had a stylist component to their business. And it's a very high touch, personalized environment. The salesperson gets to know the customer, gets to know her taste, and really caters to that. But how do you empower that in a non-face-to-face environment? So what we did is we quickly made some adjustments for them in the way their software was deployed and allowed them to send their staff home with, with devices that they could connect remotely from to work in conjunction with the website we've already built to support the email campaign they've already done and to start to deliver that high-touch clientele and stylist environment in a remote setting. And it's giving uh, their 40 stylists something to do and a way to support the business and a way to connect to their customers and a way to extend goodwill. Now, I think that's an understated part of what's going on. Everybody has to keep their doors open, has to, has to run their business, has to worry about many things. But at some point, hopefully sooner than later, we'll all come out of this. And what you want to do is make sure that your actions during this period are positive and are received positively. Those are two different things. So that your customers and hopefully others will recognize you and want to do business with you after this time. Absolutely. So the the bottom line uh, is regardless of your approach, um, showing your customers that you're being nimble and you're moving quickly uh, to better serve them is is really going to give them a lasting impression. Um, Again, whether they choose to take advantage now or they wait until later. Um, And just as Ray said, uh, when this passes, hopefully sooner than later, uh, the impression that you leave will last so much longer. Um, So we have about 20 minutes left. Uh, I want to save some time at the end for some Q&A. But before we get to that, the last area that we want to discuss um, is preparing your business now for, you know, so you can be stronger when this is over. So if you have some downtime, uh, which unfortunately, uh, a lot of us have some downtime currently. So Ray's going to take us through, uh, and this is is, uh, a long slide when we get to it. I think we have 10 different tips, um, but a lot of different things that you can do now to help make your business stronger whether you're, you know, shifting gears and looking at your in-store online strategy, maybe your email marketing, uh, you want to spend some time to clean up your email segments um, so that you can really hit the ground running when everything goes back to normal. Uh, Maybe you're looking at purchasing and you're, and wanting to negotiate with vendors, taking a deep dive into your reporting and analytics. So we'll go through these. uh, Go ahead, Ray. Yeah. So a lot of this is coming from things our clients are doing and they're engaging us in. And I'm pretty excited about that because, you know, there are things that you can do now, the possible that I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, that'll move the needle forward. So, you know, obviously you need to look at places in your business that you could do better. Inventory, email marketing, adjusting your assortment, those kind of things so that you are better able to to handle the inventory you have right now, the customers you have right now, and you know, start to evaluate what kind of impact this is going to have on your on your next season's buys while you still have a window to deal with your vendors. Uh, everyone, no matter what business they're in, is is turning the fast. Now, obviously, it's something a lot of us put off. It's something you have to do. You're going to do it, but you know, it's not just about reducing payroll and overhead, but also about taking a look at your products. Take a look at your stores. You know, have you been keeping them around longer than they're supposed to be? Do you need to take an opportunity to make a hard decision? This is a good time to do that. Um, I think one of the ones that is, is the, the most opportunistic is really taking a look at how and where you sell products. If you haven't been selling on marketplaces, if you've not been in you know, it's been on Amazon, you haven't been on eBay, maybe now is the time to look at it. If you've got stuff with a bunch of spring products that you know is, is going to do you no good, 
good when you reopen, you might want to look at how to pull some of that cash back and, and use it somewhere else. Obviously, physical inventories are kind of a no-brainer. You know, it's a good time to get a handle on, on what you really have. If, if you're worried about that, now you have time to do that task. But frankly, no one wants to do it anyway, but you have to. It's also a good time to start to take a look at your, your data in general. Wherever you think your data deficiencies are, it's a good time to address those. And I think, you know, whether that's uh, product classifications or deactivating products, if you, you've got your database 10 years old, you know, you're not looking back 10 years, it's, it's time to start doing a little bit of that. We can go to the next slide. You know, uh, on this side, you, 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 this is really more of a, you know, a pitch for us, obviously. We tried to make this a little bit more informational, but if you do find kind of what we're saying appealing, we want you to know that we are interested more than ever in doing business with other businesses. So whether you're on this uh, webinar as one of our clients or you're on this webinar as someone who's just interested in our message and might want to take a look at it, we have some offers available that you can act on now. Uh, we won't spend any more time on this today, but you know, in our email marketing and other stuff, you can you hear more about this. If you are an existing client, please contact your rep. If you are a new to seller on business, just contact us through you know sales at seller, and we'll be happy to talk with you about these in detail with you. Thank you, Ray. Um, so in closing, and of course we will, we did leave ample time to take some questions, but in closing, um, really the message here is our industry was already changing, as we all know, at a really rapid pace. Um, and this situation that we're experiencing now is only going to further that even faster. Um, the way people are buying is changing, whether we like it or not, um, and we'll continue uh, on that route, you know, even past this pandemic. Um, so we really encourage you to use this time wisely. Um, hopefully take some of these things we've suggested and apply them to your website or your social media profile or your emails um, and just stay safe, keep moving. Um, and then I threw a quote up here that I just really liked by Richard Branson. Uh, Tough times are inevitable in life and in business, but how you compose yourself during those times defines your spirit and will define your future. Just felt that was really fitting. Um, we do have some resources available, of course, on our website, celerant.com forward slash blog. We've been posting a lot of blogs with different tips and tricks and ways to help our clients and also just retailers in general. Um, some of our partners, the NSGA, the National Sporting Goods Association, whether you're a member or not, they have a fantastic page full of resources um, and the link is there. Also the Boutique Hub uh, for anyone in the soft goods space, uh, they're another partner of ours. They have a really extensive uh, resource page for COVID-19. The link is there. Again, you can check it out even if you're not one of their members. Um, and so now we have time for some questions. We're actually right on time, 15 minutes left for questions. So um, on the right-hand pane, if you haven't already, there's definitely some areas there to, uh, to ask some questions. So you can go ahead and put any questions in there that you may have. So we have a couple coming in. I can see the typing. Um, so one is I'm using MailChimp. Uh, this this will be for you. I'm using MailChimp for my email marketing. Um, what is the difference between uh, that and, and what you offer? So uh, the, the difference is not so much between the platforms. So MailChimp is, is a pretty good platform. Uh, the difference that we see is how you use that platform. And what we have done for our clients is uh, we gather their data from their stores and their website. So, and then we, uh, we put the data together and eliminate the duplicates and aggregate the data into different data points. So you end up with about 45 data points for each customer, as in what they shop, which brands, which departments, how much they've spent, when was the last time they were there, you know, uh, what's, uh, what's the frequency of their uh, orders, that kind of stuff. So what it does is it gives you the ability to use all the features within the platform, including digital, including uh, dynamic segmentation and having very targeted email campaigns. So that's what I see as difference. Nothing, you know, MailChimp is a good uh, platform, just like the one we use. It's about what you feed it. Okay. 
Good stuff. Um, so another question, uh, Ray, this one might be more for you. Um, so can you use um, the point of sale through your iPhone for, I guess, for curbside pickup? Great question. Not currently the point of sale. That's actually one of the reasons we did the, the curbside pickup app. Our clients can right now use an iPad for those functions, whether it's the point of sale and the curbside pickup. But uh, hopefully, in the not too distant future, we'll have a, a true iPhone experience for point of sale. Okay. Actually, um, funny enough, we just had a client who uh, requested that, and so we are we're working on one right now. Um, it'll be a limited uh, point of sale, but it will be accessible from from an iPhone or any smartphone, really. Um, all right, so another question, what themes, templates are available for your e-commerce sites? This is a long question. What programming language? And can a client customize the site on their own or is it only available to customize through your devs development team? So Zeke, this is definitely for you. Let me start again from the top. So what themes, templates are available for your e-commerce sites and what programming language? We'll start there. Okay, so, uh, well, we have more than one platform. So the answer is different for each platform. So our enterprise platform is not template-based. It's a custom design. Uh, our small to medium-sized platform, Cumulus, is template-based. And we have a set of templates that you can choose from. And then you will have access to the CSS part of it to make changes on your own. But if you want to make any structural changes, then that you got to go through us. And the programming language that we use, there's a, it's a mix of different programming languages. Uh, the main uh, web programming language is called Fusion, which is built on Java. And then we use a lot of SQL, jQuery, HTML5, all that, you know, all the modern uh, technology. Okay, uh, another question. Um, do you know if any of your clients are fulfilling orders only once or twice a week? I'm curious if their customers are accepting of this. Yeah, I'll take that. The answer is we have customers who've changed their fulfillment cycles based on their order volume, whether it's exactly once a week, it's as often as needed. I would also say I had a conversation with two retailers in the past couple of days that, that bear on this. One is a retailer who does uh, health and beauty items in Chicago, and that retailer has shifted to doing curbside pickup. And at the beginning, uh, they were, it was a hard justification for them to keep them in the store that many hours. Now they're over 30 orders a day. And while that's not, it's not bad, it's not the normal volume for the store, but it's certainly it's keeping them in contact with their customers. So I think customers are meeting you where you can be. I think you need to try to meet them where they want to be. And, um, you know, it's, you know, a little bit of a mixed message. If you only have to, the one thing I would say is if you can only fulfill once a week because maybe your storage are dispersed, you can't get you in this common, but make sure you're messaging that really clearly. And I think you'll find your customers will understand. Okay. And forgive me for squinting. <laughs> the questions are coming up so small, it's hard to read. Um, okay, question from Justin. Uh, can Celerant integrate with Shopify? Celeron does have integration with Shopify, uh, but I just want to be clear that we do the data exchange for all the primary data fields, as in we do the orders, we do the inventory, pricing, and customers, but uh, you know, Shopify API does a whole lot more, but we just stick to these uh, fundamental things. Okay. And then a question from Melissa. She's asking, how long um, will it take uh, to launch a new e-commerce site? And how do I get product images to put on that site? Uh, so it depends on Melissa's industry. So if she's in outdoor sporting goods, then it's a non-issue because we have, uh, you know, we have a relationship with about six or seven distributors. Uh, and we have the images, descriptions, specs all ready made. So we can basically just map that into your website. Uh, but if you are in other industries, then you, like Michelle, you said, you want to talk to your manufacturers and get images from there. And uh, we can load them for you, or you can load them yourself in bulk. So as long as they're named appropriately, 
following a naming convention, then it doesn't matter how many you have. And how long can it take to build a site? That also depends on which platform. So the enterprise platform takes longer, obviously. The small business, small to medium-sized business is much more rapid, and it's based on the factors that I uh, described, but we have launched sites as quickly as within two weeks. But that is not for every uh, prospect, every site, that is a special scenario. Yeah, and, and one so, thing- that... Sorry, Melissa. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, can't give you a straight answer because there's so many factors, but we've done it as quickly as two weeks. And, and one thing I wanted to throw in there too, um, we have a lot of vendor integrations in the outdoor sporting goods space, but we're actually, we're expanding that too. So uh, we have integrations now for Ingram, you know, for books. We have integrations for educational toys, um, and, a and quite a few other vertical markets. Um, outdoor sports just happens to be where we have a lot already available. Um, but we are eager to, to create those vendor integrations uh, across all verticals. Um, and really all we need is an introduction with your vendor um, to get that conversation going. So we're definitely eager to, to create more of those. Um, and we will as, as we get you know, introduced to more vendors. Um, all right, so another one, Zeke, another e-commerce one. How long does it take to see changes on SEO to get to page one? Okay, so that uh, I can give you ballpark numbers because nobody has the exact uh, you know, answer for that either. So what we have seen with our own experience is that it takes about three months to see, a, you know, to see the change, things moving, to see the changes. Six months to be in a decent position where you start to rank higher. And about one year is where you feel like you have you know, accomplished quite a bit and you're ranking much higher, and then from there, you basically go into maintenance mode. So about a year to ramp it up to where you wanna be. Okay. Um, all right, another one here. Um, some of my distributors have temporarily stopped drop shipping orders. Um, I'm curious mm -hmm. if customers are accepting of this and what I can do in this situation. I, I'm assuming for online so, ship. For e-commerce yes yeah. so it's, yeah we we have come across that uh Lipsies is one of them so what we have done for our clients is we've taken those distributors out of the drop ship equation so the availability that they had when they closed is no longer accounted into the you know calculation of quantity available and uh there uh, those customers are now looking at other distributors you know at least temporarily to uh, fulfill their clients' needs. But our actual consumers, they, they're not aware of that, obviously. But the retailers, they're just using other distributors or adding new distributors. Okay. Um, I have a question here from Michael. I am new to Celerant. My domain is currently hosted on Shopify. Do I need to transfer my domain from Shopify to Celerant? Yes. So when so the way that would work, Michael, uh, you would keep the domain where it is right now, and we will build a site for you. When the site is built, uh, tested, quality assured, all of that is done. When we're ready to switch, that's when you will go in and you will change the domain over to Celeron. Uh, so that has to happen. It can't stay under Shopify. Okay. And we will walk you through that. We do that on a weekly basis. Okay, oh, someone commented here that the audio was a little low. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think there's some issues with GoToWebinar because they're just experiencing so much volume. Um, okay, well, if there's any other questions, we, we have time for maybe one or two more. That's all that I see for now. Um, but if not, you can reach out to us, info at Celerant.com, or of course, uh, through the website, Celerant.com. Um, there's a contact us page, you know, we're here to answer any of your questions, whether they're just, you know, um, just tips and tricks uh, or specific questions on our platform for both existing customers and, of course, anyone who would like to talk about becoming a customer. Um, and so that pretty much wraps us up for today. Ray, Zeke, thank you so much. And everybody, thanks for joining and please stay well, stay healthy. Thank you, everyone. Bye, all. Thanks so much. Take care.